Hurd, Caldwell at 29, then J.D. Dix at 35. Uh, before that, they uh, end up getting uh, a Kentucky outfielder, Ryan Waldschmidt, thanks to uh, Corbin Carroll, because Corbin Carroll be winning the Rookie of the Year in 2023 uh, gave them that 31st pick. Uh, joining us now, let's talk a little bit about this as well as first half, Nick Bacoro uh, of the Arizona Republic AZ Central Sports. I want to start with Slade with you, Nick. You know, I'm reading some of these pundits out there saying that kind of a a, a, a Corbin Carroll like player, uh, Lenny Dystra, Pete Rose could be on a fast pass to make him to the fast fast path that is to the big big leagues. From what you've seen or heard, read about him, uh, are you seeing a guy that may uh, get up here sooner than later? Uh, I I don't know. Um, you, you never really know with high school kids. Yeah. Um, yep. you, you you usually want to be a little bit more conservative than aggressive in in predicting how quick they're going to get here. But I mean, it sounds like he's performed well on on the showcase circuit. You know, against against the the best of his peers um, over the years. Uh, he looks like he's he's a really strong physical guy despite his stature. Um, you know, you watch the videos, it's, I mean, this is a, this is a strong, well-built kid. Um, you know, it looks like he's, he's just like a, a, a muscular, thick guy. Um, and you watch the swing, it's, he's got real good bat speed. It looks like he, he hits balls hard. Um, you know, it, it looks, it, it looks apart, you know, I mean, it looks like a first round type guy with the exception of, of his height. Um. And that's that's been a thing the Diamondbacks have not been too afraid of over the years. This this front office group just does not seem to care if a guy is is undersized as long as they're strong and and capable of hitting balls hard. Uh, that's that's great because I could probably look him in the eye, which is good for me. <laughs> Nick Picoro is our guest on the Right Toyota guest line. Nick, let me follow up with that. Can you reference back? how long it took L.A. De La Cruz to finally make it to the Cincinnati Reds. I mean, look, he's a star star, and, and they knew that. The same is for Paul Skeens as well with the Pittsburgh Pirates. But Slade Caldwell and these other guys, they are not in that kind of category, correct? Um. Well, I don't know. I mean, De La Cruz, De La Cruz was a – a Dominican signing, I believe, uh-huh. at, at age 16 and, and got to the big leagues at, at 21, I want to say, okay, yeah. um, maybe 20. Um, Deans was a, a college right-hander um, who was, you know, got to the big leagues the, the next year. So, I mean, he was drafted at probably 21 as well. Um. I, I don't know. It's it's hard to compare those those kinds of things and, and put these guys in these buckets. I mean, look, uh, Caldwell went 29th overall. Um, the the guys that are that that are drafted uh, that are expected to get to the big leagues really quickly, uh, especially out of high school, usually go at the very top of the draft. So um, I I just I just don't know. I don't know that anybody really has an answer for that at this point. Okay. Like what about uh, Walt Schmidt, you know, a guy who played at Kentucky, uh, got got to the College World Series for the first time, you know, in, the, in that uh, program's history. Seems like he got, uh, you know, he rocketed up, so to speak, late. Um, what are you What are you hearing about him? I know he's coming off an ACL, though. Well, yeah, I mean that was last year. He and he and he came back this year, and yep. and. You know, basically put all of those concerns to rest as far as, the, as far as the Dimebacks are concerned. At least that's what the scouting director Ian Rebin was saying yesterday. Um, I, I I know he put up big numbers. You, you know, you look at it; it's a it's power, it's hitting for average, it's you know as, about as many walks as strikeouts. And apparently, um, you know, people people that have access to some of the college baseball data. Um, you know, are calling him a, a data darling in the sense that he he doesn't um, he doesn't chase much. He doesn't swing and miss in the zone. You know, he he just kind of does. Uh, you know, that the quality of contact stuff is really good. So like he kind of does a lot of that stuff under the hood that usually translates into a guy who is a productive hitter at at the next level. Um, 
yeah, I mean, I, I would guess that he's more advanced, that he's that he's closer, right, than the than the high school kid who's, who's three years younger. Yeah, you guys go quicker than others. Some organizations are more than others, and with these guys, um, there doesn't seem to be any shortage of outfielders uh, for the Diamondbacks at the big league level or in the upper minors. So, you know, I think they'll probably get in here and, and probably their play will, will dictate, you know, how quickly they ascend. That's fair. That's more than fair. Nick, take us now to the season. We got the home run derby tonight, all-star game tomorrow evening. Uh, Cattell Marte will be starting at second base. When the season, all the struggles that the D-backs had with all of the injuries and the losses mounted up, I roughly the first couple months had them rated as a C. Now that we have hit the all-star break, I have moved that to a B plus. Is that too high considering all the things that have happened to this team? Now they're a game over 500 and also only one game out of a wild card spot. Yeah, I don't know. Um, that, that's a, that's that's probably about that's about how I would probably grade them as well. But it's just funny because you you look around and and you look at the way the season has gone for a team like the Yankees, for example, who have struggled here in the last month, and they have a much better record than the Diamondbacks and are in much better position. And yet, I don't think anyone would say that they have to be placed with with all the concerns that seem to exist on their team. So I don't know. It's it's just it's funny how the perceptions can change just the way that things have unfolded for them, right? I mean, they're playing really well of late. Their offense is clicking. They've got Alec Thomas and Perdomo back in recent weeks. Those guys seem to have kind of lengthened the lineup. Um, the pitching staff has kind of stabilized. Um, you know, Nelson is is throwing much better. Gilbert Diaz has come up and has thrown well a couple times. Uh, they know they have reinforcements coming. So I mean. You look at it and you kind of you kind of like the way things seem to be shaping up for them. Um, yeah, I mean they got through a really tough stretch here uh, and 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 did it pretty well. I think it's ten out of fifteen mm-hmm. into the break, including you know series wins against Dodgers and the Padres, and they split against the Braves. They took another series against the Blue Jays. Like they're they're playing well against against some pretty good teams. Um, so I'm I'm with you. Uh, it's it feels a little aggressive for one over, but that's kind of the way it feels to me too. All right, then Zach Gallon. You got any concerns after he was out for that month with the hammy? He's come back. He looked good. Didn't look good. Didn't look good the other night either uh, against the the Blue Jays. He got lit up. Do you have any concerns on that, or is this the perfect time for him to get some days off and rest? No, I'm not concerned. I'm, I, I think we've, we've seen when Gallon is healthy, he's, he's awesome. I mean, I'm, you asked me about the rotation. I'm, I'm concerned about Jordan Montgomery and whether he's going to come back and, and be the guy they need him to be. Uh, kind of the reality of the situation is that when he got out of this rotation is right around the time this team started to take off. Um, you know, it's hard to be a consistent winner, uh, winning ball club when, when you aren't getting consistent starts out of your rotation. Um, you know, I, I don't mean to be, you know, bashing Montgomery, um, cause I, I know what he's capable of. I, I thought he was the best left-handed pitcher on the market last year. Um, but it sure seems like the spring training, uh, you know, the lack of a spring training is, has really hurt him and he just can't seem to get into a groove and they, they need him to, um, if you're asking, uh, you know, other concerns, like we don't know if Merrill Kelly and, and Eduardo Rodriguez are going to come back and, and be the guys that they've been in the past. Anytime you're, you're talking about an injury that, that has kept guys out as long as they've been out. I do think it's a little bit of a wild card, just how they're going to come back. Um, I, I, I look, I, I think they'll probably be fine, but like, I don't know that we can, we can say it's a slam dunk is, is kind of what I'm getting at. Uh-huh. Um, I, I, you know, I, I just think that, uh, I just think the gallon gallon is, uh, he's out there. He's, he's thrown as hard as he's thrown really in, in big league games pretty regularly lately. And, um, and I, I, I think that his track record, you know, just gives me a lot of confidence that he's, that he's going to figure it out. Nick, my last one, uh, we saw a pitcher yesterday for Toronto who clearly it's the last year of his, his contract. And I could see him getting moved at the trade deadline. 
Could you see uh, D backs making a move for him? Um, well, I, I, I don't. Are you talking about Barrios? No, Kikuchi or whatever they started last yesterday. Oh, oh, I'm Jones. sorry. That's that's right. He he pitched yesterday. My bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, perhaps I, it's a, it's going to be an interesting um, it's it's going to be an interesting question for them to have to ask. It, and 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 determine whether the the price to acquire a starting pitcher um, is is going to be worth paying when there's not that many starters going to be out there on the market. Sure. Um, especially at a time when you know, like we just talked about, they're going to have three guys coming right back into the rotation. And I mean, you you kind of feel pretty good about what you know the way Ryan Nelson's pitching, the way Diaz has pitched. Um, so you kind of feel better about your depth there. Um, it's, it's, that's an interesting so, question. I, I don't, I don't know exactly what the answer is. I, I guess I would say that I'm guessing that the, the need for a starter at, for other clubs is going to be greater to the, yeah. to the point that they're going to be willing to pay more in, in trade than, than I would think the Diamondbacks need versus willingness to part with prospects will be, you know? Um, I can I could see though you know I could see them wanting to add someone that can soak up some innings like a, like a Michael Lorenzen type you know some someone like that that was out there at last year's deadline. Hazen did uh, kick himself a lot last year for not adding another starting pitcher yeah. at the deadline. Now the cost at the time was like Alec Thomas, so he was like I'm not I wasn't going to do that, but he still was frustrated it didn't happen. So I could see him maybe erring on the side of caution and going and getting somebody. Um, but like what, what like tier they go to for a starter. Um, I'm, I'm not sure because if, if those guys do come back and, and you're liking the way they're throwing at salt river in the next couple of weeks, it might not. Feel as, as Nick, thanks for the time, buddy. Appreciate it. Enjoy the home run derby tonight. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Nick McCor joining us here on Fox sports nine ten. You can follow him on Twitter at Nick McCoro. Uh, Arizona Republic, Easy Central beat writer for the Arizona Diamondbacks. A uh, portion of today's program is brought to you by Twin Peaks. You can cool off with your favorite Twin Peaks girls all week. It's bikini costume week, Woo-hoo. and you can celebrate with specials on their favorite cheap shots, their Peaks signature taps, and more. This Thursday, we will be live at the Scottsdale Twin Peaks. Well, the Derby, the baseball's best sluggers, will take center stage tonight. Uh, a lot of first timers that'll be uh, that'll be competing, but who is the one constant? I think it's Mets slugger Pete 